Hi everybody and welcome back to part 7 in our Beginner's Guide to Photography, the series that teaches you all about how to take control of your camera so you get the results that you want. And don't forget there are lots of parts to this series, so where can people find the other parts, Amelia? Instagram and YouTube. Instagram and YouTube, absolutely. So today we're going to be looking at full manual control. Before we do that, let's have a quick recap on what we looked at last week. So last week we looked at the semi-automatic modes where you could set your priority, whether it be aperture to impact depth of field or shutter priority to impact motion blur. And if that still bamboozled you, there was another mode called P mode. Amelia, what did that stand for? Program mode. Absolutely, and program mode helps you take your first steps away from auto. All of this, of course, is set from your main camera control wheel or dial, usually found on top of your camera. Now before we get into manual, it's worth having a quick look around this dial. So there's aperture, shutter and program mode. And these here are most of the time referred to as scene modes. For example, here we have landscape and portrait. Uh, and Amelia, what do you think this one could be? Um, run and man mode or wait, sports. Absolutely. In each case, these modes will bias your settings towards that genre of photography, helping you get better results. So just like last week when Amelia asked uh, why wouldn't we use these automated modes rather than semi or fully manual, uh, these modes will bias towards a smaller aperture or maybe a faster shutter speed etc etc. But the camera is still in control. It will most likely play it safe and it may not give you a fast enough shutter speed or a shallow enough depth of field. It will still go for the middle ground or thereabouts. If you truly want to take control of your camera, then it's P-A-S-N-M. Speaking of M, it's now time to look at manual. So when you move into manual mode, you are in control of your depth of field, your motion blur, and as long as you've taken your ISO out of auto, you're in control of your quality and sensitivity as well. To make the adjustment, you will need to use your adjustment wheel. This will change the shutter as default, and to change the aperture, you will likely have to press another button down and hold it. This usually has AV written on it or aperture symbol next to it. Some cameras have two adjustment wheels, one for shutter and then one for aperture. So now you are in full control of your camera and there's nothing for the camera to change in the background to compensate for anything that might go slightly wrong. So if it is too dark or too bright, it will show when you look at your image on playback. And of course, the great thing about digital cameras is you can simply take another picture until you get it right. That obviously might take some time. So there is another way and it's by using the camera's light meter. This is nothing new on cameras. It was commonplace in older 35mm film cameras. And before that, photographers used handheld light meters to indicate the settings they would need for a balanced exposure. Once you go into manual, you will see a light meter appear on the back of your camera looking something like this, or perhaps this. A light meter shows under or over exposure in terms of stops of light, both full and one third stop increments. Now, of course, what the camera is telling you is only a guide. Manual gives you the freedom to move away from what the camera suggests, but it does tell you if you are way off. For example, here you can see the camera is telling you that you are more than two stops underexposed. And if we go the other way by changing our shutter speed setting just here, then we move to overexposure. Many people are put off of using manual because there's lots of elements to juggle. The good news is, of course, you can't break anything. And if you take a shot that's not quite right, you can simply delete it and try again. The question does arise, however, when to use manual, and that is when you need to control all three elements. You might need to control your ISO for a specific type of sensitivity, your aperture for a specific depth of field, and your shutter speed for a specific kind of motion blur that you require. Okay, so to put this into context and really test manual out, I've set up this really simple scene. First of all, we have some movement here provided with these balls. Uh, we also have some candle holders. And to offer us even more challenge on depth of field, uh, what every 11-year-old loves more than anything else in life is slime. Amelia? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so the name of the game here is to try and get increased depth of field and control our shutter speed and control our ISO to achieve the quality that we need. 
So for this first shot, we have got our aperture set at f4, which is quite a wide open hole and a shallow depth of field. Our ISO is set at 125. And as you can see, we have a blurry slime in the background, and we also have a blurry uh, Newton's cradle. And um, if I start the movement, we've got a shutter speed of 50th of a second, and that will not be enough to freeze the action, as we can see. So for the next shot then, I need to increase my shutter speed to try and freeze the action from Newton's Cradle in the foreground. So I'm going to increase my shutter speed to around uh, 2 50th of a second to see if that's enough to freeze the action. Of course, by increasing my shutter speed, it means less light has come in and uh, I have an underexposed image. So the thing that I can adjust to compensate for that, of course, is my ISO. So I'm going to go ahead and increase my ISO to around 800. So even though I've increased my shutter speed, we still have a blurry Newton's cradle at the front. And this is not down to shutter speed, this is down to depth of field. So for my final adjustment, I need to change my aperture to increase my depth of field. So I'm gonna move this up to F20, because we will have the same problem, in that as soon as I decrease the aperture size, not enough light comes in and I'm again underexposed. So again, the thing I need to do is adjust my ISO, or if I don't have that capability, I I could increase the light, the natural light or the artificial light that I have here in the room. But I'm going to use my ISO, I'm going to increase that to 12,800 and that should give me a result. Now what you may have noticed is as I've increased my ISO sensitivity, the quality of the image has unfortunately deteriorated and this is due to digital noise associated with those higher ISO numbers. When you're in manual mode, of course, it's always about balancing things out. And the more you do it, the more you practice it, the better you get at actually making those decisions. Another really useful tool on digital cameras is the playback function. This gives you instant feedback on your image, but not only that, it gives you all the detail of the settings that you've used for that shot. Uh, your aperture, your shutter, your ISO, and even your focal length which means it's excellent when you need to do the detective work on working out whether things went right or why things went slightly wrong. So for this week's challenge, we're all about manual and what better thing to shoot than a landscape and especially uh, as it's sunset. This uh, beautiful view over Bristol will mean that we have to set our depth of field but also control our shutter speed as the light drops continually. So are you ready for this, Amelia? Yeah. Okay, let's hopefully we get a nice red sky. So firstly, Amelia set her ISO to determine her quality and then her aperture to impact her depth of fill, which for a landscape, of course, you want a nice deep depth of fill. She then varied the shutter speed to control the amount of light that was coming into the camera. And after a few shots exploring the scene, got an absolute cracking result. Well done, Amelia. Okay, that's all we've got time for this week. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and you've found it useful. Uh, if you have, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so you never miss a video. Next week, we'll be talking about creative control and composition. Not a technical thing in sight, Amelia. Thank goodness for that. Oi, cheeky. <laughs> See you next week. Bye-bye.